Nowadays, we have many methods for creating 3D models, like polygonal modeling, 3D sculpting, and so on. But did you know that one method has become very popular lately, which is 3D scanning? From reality, straight to your computer, inside your 3D software, without having to do the hard and tedious work. We actually made a video when the Pop 2 was launched a while back, as well as the range, but today, Riverpoint sent us their latest creation to review, which is the Pop 3. And although this video is sponsored, everything in this review is gonna be 100% transparent and honest, because this is an independent review. And on a side note, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on this video. The Pop 3 is the next gen 3D scanner from the Pop series with a lot of new improvements, I'm not gonna lie, both design and hardware wise, as well as the software, which we'll gonna check out later. I also love the new LED lights on the scanner, which was a problem for me in the previous version. Still, a good amount of light is needed if you want to get the best results. Also, another thing I like about the new Pop 3 is its ease of use. I just plugged it in and started scanning. I didn't have any issues whatsoever with the driver or the software. The software driver scan in particular was one of the highlights of the experience for me, as I feel like it is way more sophisticated now, and it can do a ton of new stuff. But let's see what we have in the box. I already opened the box, but I want to give you an idea of what you will get once you receive the device. Revopoint offers two packages. Standard Edition and Advanced Edition. And I have here the Standard Edition, so you will get the scanner of course. This time around, I feel like it is more compact, because it feels heavier. You also get the usual mount tripod, phone holder, Type-C adapter, the sample bus model, Type-C cables for PC, a turntable, 2-in-1 Type-C for connecting to the phone, a mini turntable, carrying case, calibration board, and finally stickers, some glue tack, and a blank bag to hide any part of the model that you don't want to be scanned because we all know that the black color is the infrared scanner's kryptonite. In addition to reflective and transparent surfaces, and of course direct sunlight. And this is not a limitation of the POP3 scanner in particular, but all scanners that use the same technology. But you have a lot of workarounds mainly using a 3D scanning spray. The advanced package will include everything in the standard edition with an additional dual access turntable, which is much better than the last one. This one can be connected via a USB cable to a power source, and it can be rotated clockwise and counterclockwise by flipping this switch. You will also get a power bank to use it with the phone. This is the case if you want to scan something wirelessly. When it comes to build quality, I think Revopoint always does an outstanding job. We already used the Mini and the Range before, and the Pop 3 is no different. These things are well built, and they are getting better each year. For instance, one thing I really like is moving to a Type-C connection at the back of the device, and I love the screw support to firmly position the plug in place, because this thing is not gonna be going anywhere. Also, I like the new touch button at the back, although I accidentally started the scanning a couple of times when I was trying to adjust the scanner rotation. The new POP3 like its predecessor comes with dual camera infrared structure light with precision up to 0.05mm with a scanning speed of up to 18 frames per second and weighs 190 grams and it is equipped with Bluetooth 4.1 and Wi-Fi 6. So, the POP3 allows you to easily and basically in real time capture 3D scans for 3D printing, 3D animation, reverse engineering, healthcare, product design, and of course capturing historical items, in addition to VR, AR, and much more. Now, let's talk a bit about the software, RevoScan, which is the software that you're gonna use to scan. And now, in version 5, it is better than ever. And installing it on Windows is as simple as downloading it and installing it. On a Mac, however, you might need to adjust some of your privacy settings to allow the software to be installed. Now, for this review, I'm using a MacBook M1 Air 
So this might not be applicable to everyone, but if you find difficulty installing the software on Mac because the system can verify the source, just allow the installation in the privacy settings and you should be good to go. After installing the RevuScan software, plug the pipe through using the provided Type-C cable. And the light on the device should turn green so you know everything is working correctly. You're gonna be prompted to calibrate the device and all that good stuff, and basically rotate the device a couple of times. The software interface is much more readable now, so go ahead and click start a new project. Now you will find yourself in preview mode. You can see your infrared camera at the left and at the bottom left your RGB camera. Try to line up everything in the frame and most of the time the auto exposure will be perfect. If not, you can flip the auto switch and adjust things manually. At the right side you have a meter or a scale bar where you can tell if you are too far or too close to the subject. So keep it in the excellent to good range and you should be good to go. Then hit start to start scanning. The POP3 this time around as we mentioned has some LED lights that will help you scan your objects. But of course you can disable that if you think you have adequate lighting. But other than that, you can just put your model on the turntable, point the camera straight at it and start scanning. At any point you can pause the scan this pause button will allow you to maybe rotate your model to capture the hidden details. And what impresses me about the hardware and the software is its ability to recognize the new rotation right away and not lose where it stopped scanning from, which is very impressive, as my experience with the last one wasn't as smooth because it lost track of the scanning a lot more. Now you can hit complete to finish your scanning and start building your mesh. RevuScan has evolved to be a really great and comprehensive editing tool for 3D scanning where you can merge, edit, remove, and even plug holes in your mesh as well as other mesh editing operations like sharpen, smooth, isolate, simplify, and I just have to point out that I really love the new interface. Alright, now enough talking and let's scan some stuff. As we mentioned, reflective, transparent surfaces, as well as black colors won't be picked up correctly, so it is better to avoid these types of objects. Also, unlike the range, the POP3 isn't for super large objects, so keep that in mind. Actually, the bust included in the box is a perfect example to scan. And to test the scanner, with its non-reflective and white surface, and has a lot of varying feature sizes. With that being said, let's scan some black reflective surfaces. What? We have these three models that I'm gonna attempt to scan. And let's start with this one because I feel like this is the one I'm gonna have the most difficult time with. Simply due to the fact that there are a lot of black colors here, also it has a lot of weird angles. The best practice is to set up your lighting and lock it in. I found the auto exposure isn't always the best option, especially for colored scans. For the infrared or depth camera, I usually keep it on auto. And you can start the scan every time changing either the orientation of the object or the angle of the scanner to capture different parts of the mesh. And the software should automatically lock on the right orientation, but you need to give it time. For this Luffy figurine, I had a hard time capturing the hair. And for this tiny Zoro figurine, the shores were tricky to scan. Surprisingly, however, the Itachi figurine, I thought I'm gonna have a hard time with, but it actually captured it really well because I didn't have a 3D scanning spray, I struggled a bit with some dark spots. Also, I wish that the software could automatically resize duplicate geometry automatically or layer it on top of each other. I feel like there is a lot of improvements that can be achieved just through the software by incorporating some sort of AI or more sophisticated cleaning algorithm. I mean, at this point, people are using technologies such as Nerve and Neuralangelo to imagine a system where a scanner like the POP3 is the source of the input instead of a video or images, and this could be big, and I hope the devs keep improving the software in the future. After you finish your scan, you can export it to different formats such as STL, OBJ, and PLY. You can also export texture and your point cloud to use it in another 3D scanning editing software which can give you a lot of options. So guys, if you are interested in this 3D scanner, you can find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. 
you can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.